grace and peace to you from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is a solemn day, one where we remember the death of Jesus. And it's appropriate, I think, that we commemorate that outdoors, where Jesus died. Among all the hustle and bustle of the day, the noises of nature, and the excited voices of people around him. This was a day when Jesus endured unimaginable suffering, as well as abandonment and public shame. We would rather look away, but our faith compels us to go with Jesus on this journey. I invite you to share in this time of prayer, a reading from the Psalm, and hearing the Gospel story. Let us pray. Almighty God, we admit that this day makes us uncomfortable. The violent pain that Jesus endured makes us want to hide and wait until it's over. It makes us wish to ignore the wounds altogether. Yet in the miracle of grace, you have drawn us here, along with millions of others around the earth, that we might remember Christ's death and covenant of grace. As we undertake the ancient work of remembering, we ask that you open our hearts to feel anew the depth of your love and your willingness to be with us in our pain. Amen. Jesus quoted from part of Psalm 22 while he was hanging on the cross. And so now we hear that Psalm as well. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far away? I cry out to you by day, but you do not answer. And at night, I find no rest. We know you were there for our ancestors. They cried out for your help and you gave it. But I am a worm, something to be despised. Everyone pokes fun at me. They make faces at me. They shake their heads. Let's see how God handles this one, they shout. If God loves you, let God save you. And to think you were midwife at my birth. When I left the womb, you cradled me. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. I am poured out like water. Every joint in my body has been pulled apart. My heart is like wax melting inside. My tongue is dry. My enemies encircle me. They stare and gloat. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Savior, do not be far away. O oh my help, come quickly to deliver me. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Oh, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to get Pilate to release Barabbas instead. Well, what shall I do then with the one you call king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. And wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is the praetorium and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And then they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again, 
And again they struck him on the head with a staff and spat on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe, put his clothes on him, and then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, so you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. And those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi! Eloi! Lama sabachthani! which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. And with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. A few years ago, our daughter visited the Holy Land as part of a group of Oklahoma United Methodists. While there, they followed in the steps of many pilgrims and visited the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. This is built on the site where some people believe Jesus was crucified. Of course, we don't know the exact location. Too much time has passed. The landscape has changed so much. But in another sense, I think we know exactly where Jesus entered the darkest valley. It goes by many names. COVID-19, Syria, cancer, fractured relationships, pink slips, racism, addiction. Our faith teaches us that the suffering and death of Jesus is not confined to one space in time. Jesus voluntarily entered into shame and suffering and abandonment, places we know too well, and in so doing, he committed to walk into those dark places with us as well. Today we remember and we cling close to that one who showed us that there is nowhere that God's love won't reach, no failing God won't forgive, no hope that God will abandon.
It is traditional to include prayers of confession in the Good Friday service as we kneel before the cross. Our prayers today are inspired by the Beatitudes at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. After each petition, I will pause for a moment for you to name specific persons and situations that come to mind. I will end those reflection times with the phrase, Holy and Immortal One, and you are welcome to respond with, Have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Let us pray for all the poor, those who are without the material necessities of life or the means of obtaining them, those who feel poor in power to affect and change the conditions of their lives, those who are poor in spirit, depressed, living without hope. Holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Let us pray for all who weep and feel a sense of loss in their lives, those who have lost a loved one to death or who mourn a broken relationship. Our hearts are heavy today with all the loss due to the COVID virus, loss of lives, loss of income, loss of security. We pray for those affected and those who love them. Holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Jesus said, blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Let us pray for all those who are gentle and patient and long-suffering, those who continue to live faithfully even when success is not at hand, those who channel their anger and their rage into acts of healing and justice and love those who are unsure of their right to be loved or have not experienced the gift of unconditional grace. Holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Jesus said, blessed are all who hunger and thirst for justice for they shall be satisfied. Let us pray for all those who are victims of injustice and hate and fear and who yearn for a different way. Those who suffer under oppressive governments, those who have lost jobs and savings through the selfish actions of others, those who live with physical or emotional abuse in their homes, those who have been forgotten by the world and feel disposable. Holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Let us pray for all those who struggle to be forgiving, those who have forgiven or seek to forgive acts of cruelty as well as acts of forgetfulness, those who love with the mercy of tough love and find relationships broken, those who struggle to forgive themselves for their own mistakes and failures. Holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Let us pray for all those who are whole of heart those who strive for motives and intentions that are free of selfishness and control, those whose hearts are seeking truth and righteousness, those who love even when misunderstood. Holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Now, as we continue our reflection upon the death of Jesus, let us confess our sins. Savior of the world, what have you done to deserve this? 
and what have we done to deserve you? Strung up between criminals, cursed and spat upon, you wait for death and look for us, even those who have forsaken you. To the mystery of undeserved suffering, you bring the deeper mystery of unmerited love. Forgive us for not knowing what we have done. Open our eyes to what we are doing now, even as through your redeeming death, you transform us by your grace. O Christ, we are stripped bare by your suffering. You see our dreams, our demons, and the secrets we keep even from ourselves. Forgive all that needs to be forgiven. Heal all that needs to be healed. Awaken all the good that sleeps in us. Banish all the fears that paralyze us. May the power of your cross overshadow our lives forever. And may your resurrection clothe us with love and hope. Amen. Now allow yourself to be transported to the foot of the cross and to enter a time of reflection and prayer as we hear this mournful spiritual.
全部。